Hello everybody, hope you're all doing fantastically well. The first live in, in, in quite a while, just by myself. Uh, so yeah, hope you're all doing really well. We're here to discuss Daniel Farker's press conference, um, which has been very, very interesting. Please, before uh, we start the video, make, it, make sure you're liking uh, the content. We've got Generation Leads on the Patreon a little bit later on. Um, Anthony's in the building, says, not good news, non so or Anthony to come in. Afternoon from Ireland, Connor. Will he bag two last night against the 121s? Bring him in against Rotherham and let him do it for the Whites. Yeah, I'm not... Do you know what it is? Uh, I mean, the major news, obviously, everybody, which I'm sure you're well aware of now, is that... Willie, uh, Willie Nonto, it's probably likely that he's going to be coming in for this one because uh, uh, Jorginho Rutter is going to be out, uh, a majored out for this one with an abdominal strain. Really disappointed at this. You know, it, it does seem that these bloody international breaks are an absolute nightmare when it comes to football. Obviously, he was picked for Thierry Henry's under-21 French side, and it's just an absolute nightmare. Anytime they go away, you, you, you know, you're crossing everything, that they're not going to pick up an injury, they're not going to be knackered by the time they get back. There's going to be fitness issues, isn't there? Obviously, some of them have, are going to be getting back today, and they've got a game on Friday. Uh, some of them are going to be getting back late today as well, game on Friday. And you think to yourself, I don't know how these people arrange this sort of like madness. I remember it a couple of years ago with uh, Rafinha and he had to, he, he got back on the eve of or the night before Leeds, oh no, might, I'll tell you what it was, it was the morning of Leeds playing Southampton, it's just like how on earth are these fixtures designed, it's nuts and Leeds had an early kickoff that day, why have we got an early kickoff? Um, but yeah, I think overall when we're looking at Rutter, I do think he's going to be a big miss and, and quite right as Jamie said in the, in the comment section below, I think I think it is going to be a big miss because we're going to miss that ingenuity, the guile, the innovativeness, the creativity that we've had with Rutter. You are now looking at a situation where there is a potential that Patrick Bamford could come in for this one. And as we discussed on last night's show, Patrick Bamford should be lining up for Rotherham, not Leeds United. So I'm Really interested to see how we go about this one. Does Willie Nonto come in? He's in form. You'd, you'd presume he will. It's a pretty good option for Leeds. Does Jaden Anthony feature? Who goes in that number 10 role? Is it going to be a case of, you know, Perot just obviously dropping back into that number 10 like he has been doing and then Willie going up top? What does he do here? What does he do? Obviously, Jaden Anthony has played up top as well for Bournemouth before. So there's there's a variety of different things that he can do. But it's it's going to be a big one. It's it's <laughs> it's going to be a a big miss. Um, Rutter is is a massive player in this Leeds United cog. He's a huge player when Leeds are going forward. Massive player when Leeds are going forward offensively. He makes everything tick. He is that. He's he's almost when it comes to creativity output. He is he's, he's the best in the division at the minute. So going up against the Rotherham side, we're, we're relatively lucky that they don't have that much quality. But they're going to be up for this one. We know they are going to be up for this one. And it's, it is a cup final for the South Yorkshire side. So we've got to get this right. Farker's got to make the right call. He's got to get the boys on side. But I'm not too disheartened about Willie Nyonto coming in. As I've said, he's in form. That's all good news. I'm just a little bit worried at the fact that we are going to be losing someone with some real guile, some real creativity. And, and he's been brilliant for Leeds. And yeah, you do wonder how long this is going to be. And yeah, it seems to be hitting leads all at once at the minute. But let's get on some positive news. Um, excuse me. It looks like it looks like Sam Byram and and uh, Pascal Strauch aren't going to be out for potentially as long as Daniel Farker worse uh, initially thought, which is good news. And um, I think that apparently they've been training, which is something Rutter hasn't been doing. Jed Spence is also back in training, which is also good news. I don't know if that means that he's been training extensively with the squad. I think that's another thing. Has he been, you know, has there been a lot of work, intensive work with the, with the Leeds United starting 11 or, or whatever? I don't know. We didn't really go into that much detail. But it is one of those positives that Leeds can look at. You know, three players being, you know, training and, 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 and you know, being with within relative, you know, a, a near relative start hopefully for this Rotherham game because we do need a lot of help when it comes to fullbacks and I think Farker was almost hinting at that he also spoke on on Patrick Bamford potentially you know him having great sort of faith in Patrick Bamford starting and reiterating his faith for Patrick Bamford starting in this Leeds United setup who knows who knows <laughs>
I think, as, as Jason has said, last time we rotated, Farker got it wrong. He needs to get this one right. Obviously, it's a big game for Leeds. And I think now we're looking at this and thinking, yeah, let's see what you can do. Um, Michael says, hi, Connor. Rutter is a good chance for rotation. My worry is Farker likes the old guard and he always uses Cooper, ailing at every opportunity. Bamford will start if I'm a bet if I'm betting on it. I agree with you, Jason said, step up Bamford. I think it is going to be Bamford. I think we're going to see him start up front. Now, the pressing side of things, I don't mind. I really don't mind Bamford being in there for that. I think, as I've mentioned before, it is just the that number 10 role, which which Rutter seems to have made his own at this moment in time, which I think is I think is positive. I think he's I think he's a really good stance that leads leads have seen. And yeah, um Farkas also said that he's much happier with how England handled Archie Gray in the international break, just playing uh, just once. So it looks like he's okay for this one. I was a little bit worried about Archie Gray, to be quite honest with you. Um it also uh, looks like Nick Hammond, as we know, is to remain as Leeds United's recruitment consultants um, in the summer transfer window. But this is all all stuff that we know. Um, Farker doesn't think the chance to put pressure on Leicester and Ipswich with an early game is significant. Says that in his view, the last five or six games of the season are when you get scenarios where you uh, hold your nerve. I think he's, he's right there in, in a sense of, you know, chasing certain opposition down but I also think when you look at it you know it's you're applying pressure right now I think you can apply pressure right now to be quite honest with you uh Juan Martinez has said I'm not mentally ready to watch Bamford play football on a Friday night yeah it feels like we're gonna have to have a curry or a beer or something to to deal with that mate um I don't mind Bamford I really don't mind him as 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 a as a presser um it's just his finishing he's just nothing short of hideous and um, but he'll see this as an opportunity he was out on his podcast um with uh i can't remember the the the, the geezer the comedian and he was saying the other day that it's good it's a you know he's waiting for for that opportunity so maybe we're going to see bamford be chomping at the bit for this one which will be good maybe a different a different style of of, of patrick bamford you know him coming in and, and fitting with this front four but i just don't see i see him you know where you've got a fluid front four, and we can't really complain about this because it is what it is, but you could start Willie up there um, or Jaden Anthony and just rotate in that sense. But I don't see Bamford clicking with that front four whatsoever. I just don't see it. I don't see... You know, they've got a real synergy at the minute. I always go on about that word, but I th- and, and they've got some real lovely partnerships going. You've got Somerville and um, Dan James. You've got Rutter and the entire line. You've got Perot and Rutter. I think when Bamford comes in, he stagnates a little bit, like when you've seen him play even uh, with fa- uh, you know, with in phases with with Leeds United this season. It just seems a little bit broken. To be fair, there was a nice move when he won the penalty at Stoke, um, but then the latter of what we saw with that penalty is what we get with Patrick Bamford. So, um, did I read the title correct? I think so. Uh, I think so. Pre cons. <laughs> um, I genuinely refuse to watch if he starts. Rather find out the result at half time. Leeds United fan says, "Hey Connor, what do you think about the Rugby Super League match at Elm Road weekend on the 17th, 18th of August?" I'm a Cast Tigers fan, a Leeds United fan since I was born. Mate, I'm not a massive Rugby League fan. I, I-, I apologise for that, but I couldn't really comment on that. Roden and Anthony put a shift in for Wales. James's minutes were minimal. Good news is they didn't travel far. Uh, good point. Uh, surely Nonto starts on Somerville at the ten. That's what you'd think, Ian. I just don't think that will happen. I don't think he's going to do it. I think he's going to start Bamford. I think I've just got this bad, bad feeling that Bamford is almost in the back of his mind. And um, look, he's, he's, a, he's a striker, isn't he? He is a striker. And, and, and I think this is where the test is going to be really laid at his door. Can he get this rotation right? Because he's not got it right before. Um, but yeah, I would I would agree. And that is exactly how I would go, mate. It'd be on top top. And Somerville at the 10. Kenneth has said that why not Perot up top and Somerville in the 10. <coughs> Excuse me. It just seems at the minute that Perot is just occupying that number 10 role, which, yeah, I, I'm I'm very I'm very dubious as to why he's constantly doing that. I feel Perot could definitely be up top and there could be one of our other players in the number 10. And I think that would be great. And I think that would be advantageous for Leeds United. Um, and Rutter just seems to be just picking up the, the role of all that at the minute. Um, the number nine, the number 10, he can play out wide. Um, so yeah, 
Yeah, I think the good thing is with Leeds is we've got rotation and we've got quality as well. A lot of quality when it comes to rotation. Uh, guys, before we carry on with this video as well, please make sure you're liking the video. Make sure you subscribe as well. That'd really help. Jamie says, Bamford slows play down, can't dribble, um, can run. But to be honest, his pressing is Bielsa. Uh, left isn't what it looks to. He looks lazy to me. Yeah, that's... His pressing's all right, but I'm just, I, I hate this rhetoric all the time that, oh, well, he runs, oh, well, he does this, oh, well, he does that. But that's all you can cling on to at the minute, unfortunately, when it comes to Pat Bamford. Like, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just can't see it being Nonto, to be honest with you. I can see him going like for like with Nonto out wide and Jaden Anthony, but I think he's going to go with Bam Bam up top um, and maybe Perot in the 10. I think you'll see this as an opportunity to see Bamford and Perot together as well. So I think that's what we're going to see. I think we're going to see a, a little dual partnership there with those two. I'd be really surprised if he didn't do that, um, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, lucky to get a point with these injuries, says Andrew. I'm praying we get more than a point, mate. Uh, Jason uh, has said, uh, I will play Somerville 10, Perot number 9, and uh, Nonto left wing inverted winger. Um uh, let's 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 bear in mind this is a, a Rotherham side who who obviously got a point off Ipswich and were unlucky in that game, you know. Um obviously Ipswich did what Ipswich do when they grinded them down at the end, but Rotherham were able to get a late equaliser. So this is not this is this is a team who against the top teams in this division have been okay as well. You know, not, it's not horrendous results against a lot of the top sides. So Leeds are going to have to be right up for this one. And with these this level of injury list, you're just hoping that we might have some good news on the day when it comes to Byram, when it comes to Jed Spence. I think Strauch's going to be a little bit too early. But if 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 Byram's hamstring injury isn't as bad as once thought and Jed Spence is just in, that would just give them a massive boost. I think with Rutter out, I just wonder how that front four is going to work. I just wonder how they're going to work. Is there going to be a balance there? Because he's the link. You know, he's the link in that puzzle for me. Um, he is the proper number 10, really, isn't he? Um, with hybrid in as a number nine as well. What's happened to Rutter Longy? It looks like he's he's got a strained abdominal and he's a major doubt for tomorrow. It's going to be interesting to see how long he is out for. Bamford should be nowhere near the pitch, says Neil. Uh, James says he'll definitely start Bamford. Farker wants to rebuild him. The guy shouldn't be. I've just got. To, I think he will, Jamie. I agree with you, mate. I think it is going to be Bamford. If it, I'm, I'm listen, I'm, I'm hoping it is Nonto, but I've just got a feeling it is going to be Bamford. Matteo Joseph should get the nod. Um, George says, mind you, it might not be a bad thing if he says to him, this is your last chance and he doesn't play well, then it's completely over for him. J Nonto deserves a start, though, time to move forward. And that's it. It's like he's not an out and out number nine, as we know, but we have got a number nine there in Joel Perot, is this the time where, like a few of you have said, you know, Somerville goes 10. We've seen him play 10 before. He's played relatively well in number 10. Nonto goes out left. James is out right. And we play we play that way, you know. And Bamford, though, for me, it is just one of those where you just don't rely on him. I don't trust him. I don't trust him whatsoever. And, you know, that's that's the only fault that I see. It's it's the trust element. There's more than one fault, but the big one is trust. Um, Kingy says, um, problem is, and it will hurt some feelings, this is where Farker isn't good enough. His, ta his teams and tactics are average. Come at me, people. It's true. Chris coming in with smoke this evening, or this afternoon, I should say. Uh, Chris, he's got a soft spot for the old guard. You obviously didn't see him what we suffered last season. Headers. Uh, it says that uh, I still think Farker could be gone by January 1st. Don't think 49 will put put up with it if we're not in the top two. Um, yeah, I think I think the top two is definitely the aim. And the 49ers are ruthless businessmen, as we know. Um, I just, I think he's got to get this right. I think he's he's got it wrong before when there's rotation. But I think, you know, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see, you know, when it comes to the injury list, if Leeds do get a boost at the at the at the weekend when it comes to uh, sorry uh, on Friday when it comes to Bamford um but yeah big news everybody that's it you know not a massive press conference but a very impactful one let me know what you guys think in the comment section below really interested to hear your thoughts on this one we will be doing generation leads later on reacting to this in podcast form me and my old man wittering on about this the links in the description below all proceeds go to the channel hope you're enjoying the updates Make sure you leave a like on the video, everybody, um, and get your, get your lineups in the comment section below. I'll be reading them, um, and, I'll, and I'll try as much as I can to respond to them as well. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Rutter out for this one. Massive. See you in a bit.